Hello there folks and welcome back to the Scott Ree project and today I am going to show you another classic traditional butchery cooked meat preparation. Now some of you may or may not have seen that fantastic brawn I made with the pig's head but today we are going to make my favourite which is Hazlitt. I love Hazlitt and over in the US I suppose it's akin to a pork meatloaf here we serve it cold you can buy it on deli counters and it is absolutely stunning so i just want to show the ingredients we are going to be using i want a fatty cut of pork so i've chosen belly pork you want a good ratio of fat i've got 800 grams i've got some spankingly fresh pig's liver 400 grams of that i've got a chopped onion and it's all about the herbs and spices in the hazlet you know it wants to be sagey it wants to be herby so i've got some fresh sage fresh thyme some parsley and the cooked meat's favorite some ground nutmeg some mixed allspice and i've got 250 grams of bread which is the secret ingredient and 300 ml of milk so what i'm going to do i'm going to clear this away i'm going to start mincing my meats because this comes together real quick believe it or not but in the meantime i just want to take a bowl and then get my bread just put my bread in and I'm going to soak that for about 10 or 15 minutes in 300 mils of milk and as you can see on top of that belly pork which I've just covered in milk I've got two eggs which is our binding agent so I'm going to let those soak I'm going to set up the mincer and we'll get mincing our two meats together so in my belly pork then I'm just going to get my knife in keep it flat straight along that takes off the rind you can save that if you wanted for pork scratchings just quickly nip the rind off all these pieces of belly so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put this through my mincer if you get friendly with your butcher get them to do this for you because it can get quite messy but a good trick if you've got a home mincer put the liver through first and then obviously the pork will clean it up on the way through where the other way around you might have bits of liver stuck in your mincer so this is going to be a bit noisy so that's my liver minced looks nice doesn't it dripping out of there so in now and mince my 800 grams of belly pork bear with me a sec let's do this do you know what i really do love that mincer it is one of the best things i have bought anyway i've got my 800 grams of belly and my 400 grams of pig's liver within seconds turned into this fantastic minced pork and all we're going to do now, because believe it or not, that's the hard work done, is give it a good mix. And then we're going to start adding our ingredients. What we want to do is obviously we soaked our bread in our milk. I want to leave that for about 15 minutes. So it just needs a couple more minutes. And then we can add that to our fantastic mix. So my bread's been soaking in that milk then. Remember that was 250 grams of white bread. The staler the better and 300 ml of milk. So we're just gonna squeeze out the milk and then just gently crumb this into our mix. This will keep it nice and moist. Just take your time as per usual. We can give it a good old mix up and get these all incorporated nice always with things like this you know it's not the nicest preparing it and i don't mean that in a bad way you know it's sticky there's some strange textures going on but you know it pays dividends in the long run so there's our bread gone in we'll give that a good mix up i'll get it on the board and we'll add our herbs and our spices and our seasoning so this is a traditional recipe from Lincolnshire, which is big pig country and nothing likes pork more than sage. So 
going to get me some sage leaves fresh and obviously this is just going to lift it now from I mean it smells good now once we add these it will start taking on that lovely almost sausage smell and like I said in the brawn video always with your seasoning over season because it really does mellow when it cools so we'll get our fresh sage leaves in there I might add a bit more to that put it in our bowl we use our parsley our thyme and my two eggs so into the mix that chopped onion so already we've got pork sage and onion is there a better trio I suppose Russia a good trio if you like that thing so I'm just gonna quickly get in some chopped parsley I mean you can add whatever you want at this stage you know if, again if you want to add your chilies or your paprika whatever ever you want to add just gonna tear off a little bit of thyme not too much get that in there and then it's time to add our spices so into the mix I suppose we'll add half a teaspoon of allspice and then just roughly measuring nutmeg and we'll give that a mix up and see where we are you want to give it a good mix up as if you were making sausage meat so it binds but like I said we'll be adding those eggs to make sure it sticks really well what's that smell like now oh beautiful I am actually going to add a bit more sage because I like a sagey flavour a bit more sage in and then this is the bit you've got to get right just when you think you've seasoned it enough like I've said before give it a little bit more and today I am going to be using mold and sea salt someone said on my brawn video why do you use just normal salt well to be quite honest that's what's been used for years but you know I am going to try it with sea salt I mean it looks a lot but it really really does mellow and then I'm going to add some pepper and it's going to be quite peppery this so get that bit in there like that it's just a case of getting your hands in it smells as you can imagine awesome now awesome oh yeah so all that's left to do is I'm going to beat those two eggs and add those in which again will be for the binding always good to crack eggs on a hard surface get them in there give them a quick whisk up and then we'll add that straight into our mix and remember it's okay you won't taste the egg it's done on such a low heat that it's just there to bind it and we'll just give that one more good mix up and we'll get it into our tin beautiful it's a dirty job but someone's got to do it and you know what it's always me but I love it right I'll get my loaf tin ready so my loaf tin couldn't be easier spot of oil get it all covered and then in with the mix might be able to make two out of this one get it in press it down so we get rid of any air holes and I've pre heated my oven in Garth Mark 4 if you look up there look at them fingers you'll see the conversion and we're going to initially cook it for an hour and we're going to check the temperature and then 
we'll see where we've got to go from there but just get it nicely in your tin get it flattened down I should put it on another tray and we'll get it in the oven now one thing you can do if you can get some pork fat from the butchers you could rest your fat over there which gives it that traditional finished look but I can't do that today purely because the reason I ain't got none I'm not gonna lie to you but it doesn't really affect the recipe at all or you could line your tin I suppose with bacon but at the end of the day it's still gonna come out perfect in the oven then gas mark for initially for an hour so my hazlet so far has been in the oven for an hour as you can see it's not quite cooked obviously when it's cooked we want an internal temperature of 70 degrees but we also want a nice dark caramelized top I'll just give it a quick pro so that's reading 65 and if you can see that so that's going to go in for another half an hour because you really do want that lovely brown top as well so we'll check on that in a bit so that's been cooking for two hours and as you can see looks fantastic I can't wait to try a slice first thing I'm going to do though because I want to serve this cold primarily is I want to like I did with my pig's head want to get some weight on it to push it down get my old school weights back on it and we'll let that cool naturally in the tin and hopefully hopefully in an hour or so we can give that a try and I can't wait okay this has been in the fridge for three hours you can leave it overnight if you want to but to be honest I want to get in there I want to take a look so I'm just going to get my knife around the edges if you remembered I put a weight on it to press it let's hope this comes out oh yeah let's turn it over oh mm. what an amazing looking thing so obviously this could do with a little bit longer in the fridge but I just look at that I want to give it a try that is absolutely superb and the seasoning is awesome like I said that could do with a little bit longer just have a look of what we got oh it's stunning well my friends that is another one of those classic thrifty old school dishes you know that you don't see much made much anymore calls for some chutney this is a beetroot chutney I'm gonna give it a slice I mean it does it's a million miles away from that stuff you buy at the shop you know that pressed mass-produced stuff this has actually got some integrity it's just absolutely awesome I mean a lot of bit of that as per usual if you've liked what you've seen today on the Scott Reed project please subscribe to my channel by clicking down on the right there also follow me on Twitter at the Scott Reed project follow me there and I can answer your comments and I must apologize if I haven't answered all your comments yet as you can imagine I have a lot to get through but I will get round to answering you back I hope you've enjoyed that another classic traditional buttery cold cut video I'm gonna get this down my neck now tell you what I can't leave this stuff alone it's like crack cocaine just remains for me to say then thanks for watching see you again soon all the best someone pass me some bread and butter